Hello, um, today we're going to speak in English and I have a very uh, beautiful and very professional um, uh, my, my other side for, for, for this uh, talk and, and, and uh, she will introduce herself for me not to spoil uh, with the wrong pronunciation, the beautiful name. And, uh, and we talk about the investments, companies, um, mergers and acquisitions and uh, private equity in the Baltics. Okay. Okay, so I'm Dimanta Korsakaita. I am the executive partner of uh, one of the leading uh, Baltics private equity funds. I am the El Baltic Sigro Fund. And uh, the fund is managed by uh, one of the largest asset management groups, Invalda INVL, which is worth saying that uh, as a private company, uh, it's, uh, it is managing over one and a half billion euros of assets. Uh, that was entrusted by over 250,000 people. And uh, it boasts over 30 years of experience of investing in uh, private equity assets and uh, managing them and actually has uh, made a few really big regional uh, leaders. And uh, currently, uh, as in Valdo, we are suggesting a number of uh, products and assets for our clients to invest in, it being you know, a number of alternative assets like real estate, forest, uh, agricultural land, uh, renewables, private debt, um, obviously private equity, uh, and uh, as well even pension funds and uh, life insurance. And um, INVL Baltic Seagro Fund was established as a successor on decades of Invalda INVL experience of uh, investing in the private equity assets. And um, it is, um, its aim is uh, to make a diversified portfolio of uh, a number of companies in the growing markets, uh, looking for those companies that can really compete on the global level. And uh, we are investing like 10 to 30 million euros in, in, in one portfolio investment. And uh, we are really looking for those companies to really grow and, and become the leaders in, in the region. And not only in the region, because uh, geographically we look uh, into the Baltic states, as well as around the Baltics. Uh, I mean, Poland, uh, Nordics, um, as well Germany, because it's like close to the, to the Baltic Sea. And uh, I would say opportunistically anywhere in the European Union. So Invalda is outside the banking sector, actually one of the biggest or the biggest player effectively in that asset management. You could, you could say that. Yes. Okay, that in, encompassing all, all of you, what are you doing? And, and you have been doing it almost for a generation now since the... Since 1991. Yeah. So basically, just after we regained the independence. So, but, uh, and you have been present as well in Latvia. And of course, uh, the, we're mostly talking here, although, I mean, we're talking to the world, but, but uh, uh, for the Lat Latvian uh, entrepreneurs and, and uh, uh, managers and, and uh, people who think and, and, and want to do something about the business. Uh, so what, what is changing or kind of like, or, or, or direction? Because uh, you, you were more with the asset management the, for, for the, selling the, the funds, but now you are more in, in uh, private e equity here. here. Yes. So t t tell, tell us about more, more about that. It is actually, as I mentioned, the private equity was the basis of Envalda. And then going to this traditional asset management where uh, you are just offering different funds to the clients, it, it, it came later. But uh, for, since the very beginning, we are investing in the uh, private companies working with those companies, developing those companies, and then, then selling. The main difference was that uh, previously it was investment from the balance sheet, which, you know, the, ba the balance sheet has its limits. And uh, when you need to do a huge expansion, it's every time deal by deal, you need to be looking for the core investors. What do we have now is this committed capital of 165 million euros that's committed uh, by our investors. So it's institutionals, high net worths, uh, corporates uh, from all over uh, the Baltics. And uh, this capital is for buying those companies and, uh, and it's readily available uh, based on our decision. And we're just investing, looking for the, for the good companies to invest in and, and those that have actually a potential where we see the, the actual potential to grow the companies. Mm -hmm. So you have dry powder or 165 million more Dry less. powder is 100 million. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, but, 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 but uh, and let's say as you're doing it all over the Baltics and even outside the, the region so, somewhat, um, uh, and you said that 10 to 30 million is the sweet spot where you would like to, to, to invest. 
20 million euros, I would say, is the sweet spot. But we can definitely start from a smaller ticket, and that's already been the case. Let's say the, uh, it is a growing industry, and uh, the industry is, uh, has low consolidation. And uh, we see a platform company where we can invest in and from that company to start the consolidation of the industry, in which case it's more not investing into one single company, but it's investing in the theme of the consolidation of a certain industry. So then we start from a smaller ticket, but we know that we will go up close to our sweet spot by consolidating and, and, and buying the other companies. Okay. so so. Um... If it's okay, we, we, maybe we can zoom in a little bit and, yes. and just, uh, I guess you have uh, uh, studied and looked at the market and see the industries and maybe uh, you, you, we, we can let know the people that uh, you are out uh, there, what, what do you prefer, what, what, the, what are the industries you, you kind of like see that there is this potential for the deals and where you would like to be. Uh, I, would, uh, I would outline one uh, important thing, that we are industry agnostic which means we are not discounting any industry uh, unless the industry doesn't pass our ECG test, which is well, we cannot invest into the weapons or into the gaming or into the alcohol, um, etc. Uh, there are some others. Or uh, it happens when an industry has like a general negative aspect. But overall, into any industry we do look at in, and we look into any good companies, if to mention a few industries where uh, the private equity radar uh, looks, so I would say it's the healthcare, it's the e-commerce, uh, it's the industrials, any manufacturing, any B2B businesses, uh, recycling, environmental services, uh, this you know closed loop uh, related uh, related industries and services. Um, as well, definitely um, IT technologies, uh, we start looking into it. Now, as I unveil Baltic Sea Fund, so far we do not have investments into like really techno technologies uh, industry, food processing uh, industries, just to, to name a few. And if to like give a definition what private equity and, and us and investors does, so they're analyzing the industries, they're uh, looking for the future prospects of the industries. And in general, there are like few criterias for the industry. So either due to some macro trends, you see that the industry will be growing, for example, senior care, or uh, the industry has low penetration. So it's some new industry and there's just few players, or uh, the industry has low consolidation, like it's really fragmented. And it's an example of what was in uh, Lithuania, at least still a few years ago, not sure how how it's uh, in Latvia with this healthcare. Uh, or um, you can see that the consumer behavior is, is, is changing uh, and uh, you see the ability to leverage on the, on the change of this consumer behavior. Um, could be technology driven, but, um, but so far we, we, we haven't looked at, at, at such industries. So that's, that's just to name a few. And, and in general, I have this saying like for uh, maybe not too much professionals, but for founders or, or entrepreneurs um, who have their businesses and they are looking for the growth. So if you have a company, a manufacturing company, and you need a capacity expansion, so you can go to the bank, but maybe the bank is not willing to, to finance you. So this is where we can come in. Or uh, you have an idea of expanding uh, cross-border and you want to do an acquisition, acquire your competitor, but you've never done an M&A transaction in your life and it requires a very specific skills to do this transaction. So you can come to us and uh, we'll sit at the table and, and we'll agree on our equity investment and we will come in to assist and um, acquire the, the competitor. So, you, so you're uh, ready to help and looking for the moment when the company is is, is, is going to move on or, or for some change or in, either in ownership or in the markets on, or, or anything, anything else? Anything. It can, be, uh, it, it can be even problems in between the current shareholders. So we do complex transactions uh, where you need a lot of patience. And uh, sometimes this is as well where the value lies for both parties, for us who can acquire a good company that's currently struggling just because, let's say, of a conflict of shareholders. And it's for the shareholders that finally solve their conflict because they just 
you know, split split the capital. They get capital from us because we we, we do the buyout. So a number of uh, a number of themes there can be for for the acquisition growth, um, generation change, some financial difficulties maybe, but uh, you need equity um, as well as I mentioned maybe problems between the owners or a management team. Let's say a management team has an idea of buyout, buying out the current company that they are in. We can back a management team or a management team uh, with a, an experience already in the industry and they have an idea of buying a company. Let's say they know somebody wants to exit and uh, they are ready to step in as managers, but they need somebody to back them. So we can back managers. Okay, I think this is a very good channel to let let know of your activity and, and, and fund, fund size and so on. But but uh, uh, besides that, do you keep a, 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 a kind of a team or some team member here, or you work with the people like like us who do the M and A in the market and and work with the clients, or or how how it's organized? We do have uh, one member here already, uh, but um, we uh, employed only this this year. Uh, and it's a new team member and he's uh, like a bit more junior. So I would say that in terms of the partners level, so we are based only in Vilnius and uh, we work from Vilnius, but uh, definitely in terms of the uh, sourcing uh, of the deals and getting the ideas, we definitely work with someone like you, with people who, who come up with the ideas. And uh, as well, since we are already have uh, portfolio companies here, so as well, it comes through through managers, so word of mouth. Yes, word of mouth and uh, the uh, overall network, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, do you intend to to offer locally uh, as as well some uh, the ability uh, uh, the possibility to invest in your in your fund some some fund fund shares or something uh, in in in, the, in Latvia for the investors or something like that. Oh no, the the fund has been ra rise, the raised raised and, and closed. Yes, the fund has been raised closed. We offered uh, this fund to a number of uh, institutionals, corporates and high net worth individuals. It's been closed and once we deploy um, up to 80% of our capital and uh, the dry powder just goes down, we can raise a successor fund. So once the successor fund is being raised, then it will be again offered. And it it is offered to, to Lithuanians, to Latvians, Estonians, and uh, to all the Europeans. Okay. So that then happens with a different part of Invalda or we, through the other sales ch channels or, or how? It, talking about the high net uh, it, it happens through the um, arm, which is wealth management of Invalda. So it's a wealth management part. Yes. Okay. I think we very effectively and uh, efficiently in, in, in short uh, covered a lot of, lot of ground. Um, so we can maybe even more than talk, uh, but, but you, have you made any investment uh, in, in, uh, in Latvia? You said you have the portfolio of companies already here. Yes, yeah. yes. So, so we can talk about then the, the differences in culture or, or what you can talk about because certainly there uh, is some difference in the corporate culture in, in Lithuania, I guess, in Latvia and, and uh, Estonia for that matter. I wouldn't escalate any significant or, or even subtle uh, differences in the culture. We have portfolio companies in Lithuania, in Latvia, in Denmark. Okay, maybe it's not fair to say Denmark because it's only headquarters, so manufacturing sites are in Poland and in China. So the, there are no very, like, there are of course cultural differences, but they are not significant. But I think the main thing why we work successfully with uh, the managers from the different countries is we know one thing, we know how to be and that we are a very good professional owner. But we know that we are not operational manager and we don't know how to do the operational stuff. We are the owner, a professional owner. And a good professional owner who knows that uh, he needs just to be an owner and to, um, to perform like an owner and a good operational manager tandem, I would say is unbeatable. And we know what each other's job is, and we do not interfere into each other's job. And I would say that this is the way to overcome any cultural differences. And uh, I, I would assume that the management of Ecobaltia, because we are the controlling shareholder of uh, Ecobaltia, of the whole group, uh, would really confirm this, because um, 
we came in uh, in June 2020, at the end of June, uh, and uh, we haven't changed the management. We found the successful ways uh, to actually work together, being them at what they are best, and uh, providing the assistance and the know-how, the additional know-how um, that we have, because we know where to look at, how to look at it, and where to direct people. Uh, and uh, you know, I can uh, I can only only say that we are so proud seeing how the company is growing because we entered the company of 75 million euros. Now we have a company of uh, roughly 440 million euros. Beautiful growth, and, and, and uh, everyone would like to see. Um, so so you are uh, opportunistic, you are industry agnostic, and you are a good professional owner, uh, kind of like. Yes. The, the main points, I would say. Yeah? And we do not invest in businesses that we do not understand. That's okay. as well a very important point. So you point looked under the Warren Buffett uh, uh, rule book. You can say bit. so. You can say so. Okay, but that's all, only the common sense, which is not so common. As you know. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, but, but, but uh, uh, nevertheless, maybe getting a bit, a bit uh, uh, back to the uh, previous question I, I had not, uh, is that uh, still, uh, you have your your junior partner here, but but what what is the role you, you overall see the, uh, the other players and, and uh, financial intermediaries uh, uh, like like uh, investment bankers and and uh, banking boutiques and and, and uh, banks uh, uh, to to help you source and maybe uh, work on these deals or um, raise some additional capital or whatever or you do that all all that in house. Okay, so. I, uh, I would comment like this. So one thing um, for an investment banker to work for a private equity on a buy side, it's rare. But uh, same way it's extremely rare uh, not to have an investment banker financial inter intermediary in the exit mode. So that's, that's always that what the investment bankers do for private equity. It's help to exit, help to maximize the, the value from the exit. Another uh, important role of uh, the investment bankers that I would outline is when you have a portfolio company and definitely it's, uh, it's public what we have. And uh, investment bankers really often do a good job of just coming up with the add-on opportunities. And uh, once they come with the add-on opportunities, they usually they get their engagement from the sell side. So they somehow connect these two sides, us, us and, and, and the sellers. Uh, and uh, the last but not the least, and I would say one of the most important um, roles of the financial intermediaries is when they're working on the sell side, especially when they're working not for professional investors, let's say like we are, but more for founders, entrepreneurs, maybe for some it's the first and maybe the only deal that they are doing in their lives. So the experience and know-how of m and deal, it's completely different between the professional investor and, and, and that founder. So the financial intermediaries really work as a, an amazing bridge of explaining to the founders um, like the rules of the game and, and how it's been done and why somewhere the risk exists and why somewhere the risk doesn't, doesn't exist. Because sometimes you can just be afraid of a mice running around, uh, around the room, but uh, actually it doesn't, uh, you know, th there's, there's no threat coming. So it's so it's <clears throat> so it's uh, more value added for for the uh, for the investment bankers to <clears throat> uh, help the the uh, sell sell side and to and to maximize the the, the fees and, and do the hand holding for for uh, the owners and uh, uh, less less experience with the, probably the, their their uh, largest investment uh, of lifetime and and, and uh, what they have spent years or tens of years uh, creating. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and uh, what about nevertheless? You said you're a good owner, but uh, but but still, uh, you, you you as a good owner, you do some changes in the management. And what do you what do you see that uh, the, the are at least uh, lo uh, locally or regionally in the Baltics? We're seeing a mixed uh, management teams with uh, different representatives from Lithuania, uh, Estonia, Latvia working together. Maybe other other uh, con countries. Or it's still predominantly the, the lo local people, no one do it best, best? Predominantly, I would say nobody does better than a local person who speaks local language, who knows local particularities. But um, there is important uh, side to comment on is 
how we form, how we you know, form those management teams. And uh, we are looking at the experiences and the knowledge that is required for the operational value creation and growth plan that was set for the company. And I'm not saying we're best at doing that, but we really aim to very tightly link our value creation plan and strategy to talent, to talent and management team. Because having a tight link between these two really allows to A, accelerate this value creation and B, to mitigate the risks of investment. And then this, this way to, to uh, add, add, add value. And you have a kind of like, you agree on the roadmap and, and then the ones who are the best at executing it and, and getting to the goalposts, so to say, yes. uh, uh, of course, uh, in, a, in a way win. Yes, uh, and we align our interests with them. Because as a rule, we never come in and say, okay, this is your fixed salary, this is your annual bonus, you know, based on some usual, uh, usual rules. But we uh, try to align our interests with them in terms of, so they know where we are going, they know where they have to take the company, and uh, there, uh, like, it can be, you know, option schemes, uh, option programs, so that the motivational, uh, the motiv motivational program is based on our exit, on the value that's been created during the holding period, which I think gives a very good aligning of interests. So it works well for the company because the company is growing. It works well for us, and it works well for management. Maybe we then uh, could talk a little bit about the uh, uh, environment in a sense. Okay, and I understand that you invest in, in, in try to invest in good companies and in, in industries uh, which you are, you are ready to invest, but at the same time you are opportunistic. Uh, and, but 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 uh, but of course, and then you don't invest if you you, you don't know about uh, enough about the business and don't understand it. But uh, nevertheless, what, what, what then predominate, uh, predominates? Uh, are you looking as well at the macro trends? Or, or Of course you are, but, but uh, what, what drives more? The, the, the micro situation, the opportunity, or, or, or you overall try to not, not to get uh, against the, 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 the wind, and, and, and then where the wind is uh, in, uh, in our backs, then, then you try to invest in that in industries. And then we can get and talk about the Baltic economies. It is uh, the best when uh, you can guess where the <laughs> winds will be blowing, uh, but uh, that's not always. So sometimes we get lucky, maybe even, and, and then you just uh, find yourself uh, invest, having invested uh, where you're having really, really good winds uh, blowing into your tail. Uh, but I would say it's both. We are, of course, analyzing macro trends, and we are upcoming with the themes where we would be, uh, where we where we would like to be looking into and to be analyzing, and then you uh, granulate. So you say, okay, so what are the companies, let's say, in Baltics in, in this uh, in this industry? Okay, you list down the companies. The the countries are small. I mean, you you can you can get the you know lists of largest thousand companies in Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, and you can just analyze each each and every company. Uh, so you look at those companies and then you can see, okay, this is uh, no go, this is no go, and then, okay, it, there might be something, let's talk to those three or four or five companies. The other way is simply you get a suggestion, a teaser from the investment bankers. So that's the really big role of investment bankers, where, 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 which they play. They're just helping the sellers to sell. and. The sellers, they can be just simply willing to exit, as I mentioned, because of the generation change. There can be problems between the shareholders or they need a growth capital. And then you start analyzing the industry. Because, okay, a good, maybe it's a good opportunity. Industry, is it interesting or not? Okay, it's potentially interesting. Let's analyze it. And then you, you know, again, go from macro to a bit more granulated uh, analysis of the company itself. Very good. You, you, you're uh, putting it very clear, clearly, uh, I, I think, for, for anyone who has not uh, even, even been involved in the process. Um, but, but then, uh, l let's say, uh, now uh, try to zoom out a little bit again and, and uh, look at the Baltics and the Baltic economies and, and, uh, as a part of the European economies. And, and w w where do you see where we are going? Uh, um, uh, the, the, the year is still relatively young. And and uh, and uh, of course, unfortunately, uh, what's ha what's happening right now in 
in Ukraine uh, uh, at the moment where we are uh, uh, creates some extra uh, uncertainty. But uh, so I'm not, not going to put words in your mouth. So, so well, how you see that? How your company see that situation in the Baltics in the, in the economy? Where are we going? And, and what what could be could we talk about the possible impacts and so, so on? Just a week ago, let's start from just a week ago. The sentiment was really positive. So 2021 was booming in M&A market. And uh, apart from geopolitical tensions that were already there, and in general, the um, you know, questionable situation and dis uh, disturbances in the market because of COVID, you never know what's coming, what new variant is coming, how it's going to affect the market. But uh, apart from this, where you had to be always, uh, always alert, uh, we consider that the really the sentiment is positive. We didn't see reasons why the companies wouldn't be growing. And the outlook was that the growth will continue for a few years ongoing. And the sentiment was that in uh, this year, let's say the same m and market is either going to be even increasing comparing to last year or at least uh, stay, stay the same. But um, there are few reasons for that. Uh, why we looked at the market and uh, we considered that the growth will continue. So there's a good cash supply because the 20, year 2021 was really good for most of the companies. So they have generated really uh, generous cash supply. There is a large availability of capital in the market. So it's currently where we are in terms of the Baltics and the private equity. So that's the first time in the history where three Baltic managers they have private equity funds, roughly the same vintage, and all of them are above 150 million euros. That's already a huge cash supply for Baltics. The size of VC funds, so this earlier stage, is as well growing. So if back in the days, it's like 10, 15, I don't know, 10, 5 million. Now they're going above 20, 20 and, and 30, and et cetera. And um, what we saw that the strategics were always interested in the Baltics, but uh, not too much the private equity from outside the region. Now private equity from outside the region started looking for the investments uh, in the Baltics. And at least from what I heard, even the investment bankers, they were trying back in the days to send the teasers, but they were not getting any responses. Now the funds themselves, the managers are calling to the investment bankers in the Baltics and saying, hey, don't forget us. <laughs> we want to get the teasers. So that's increasing the, uh, the availability of capital in the Baltics. Then the technolo technology change. Then all the shift to this digitalization and efficiencies and ECG and, and anything that uh, might require the growth. And uh, in general, the uh, positive market sentiment itself. Before a week ago, we were all over the moon. That you know, everything will continue growing. But obviously, now uh, in this, this week's uh, situation and, and, and what happened just a week ago, um, it is not clear what is going to happen. It's, it's really tough to say now. We live in unprecedented times, COVID and, and war, and uh, you really have to be alert, stay alert. You have to adapt at an exceptionally fast pace. It's, it's never been like this. And uh, companies, our companies, our portfolio companies, of course, as well, are still in the assessment stage assessing the, the risks and assessing the potential Im impact that's coming from, nobody knows whether there's going to be an economic avalanche or not, but uh, we already see the uh, rising commodity prices and, uh, and uh, the gas and et cetera. So it is hard to say what's, what's going to happen, but uh, I believe that there might be a pause for now, uh, at least when some way or another, the uh, circumstances or the events will roll out. Mm -hmm. So let's hope that our portfolio company is going to be anti-fragile ones. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Uh, yeah, yeah. Who, who can handle these these uh, uh, difficult times? So, and uh, still, you be, you'll be looking uh, for uh, for the new ones. Uh, and, and now you you have additional information and and and, and part of the picture to, to test and, and think about your your investments. It's true. We uh, really, to, to send the positive sentiment as well to everyone who listens to us, is we uh, do not see any reason to stop our investment activity. And uh, we, as a fund, as a manager, as in Valda, we think, in Valda INVL, uh, we think that uh, the best thing that we all can do is to be calm, 
and uh, to do best what we are best at, continue working. And uh, what, what's then, if we look at the in, in, in Val, the, is, is the ambition. You said you, right now you have, you're one of the three uh, largest uh, players in, in this uh, private equity uh, yeah. landscape. So to say uh, with, with the funds of roughly the same size and the same, uh, when that's the same vintage. Uh, but going ahead of that, you, you of course, uh, you, you see yourself where in, the, in, the, in this and in, in your, your growth. We see ourselves like double the current size. <laughs> and uh, yes, we will be raising a successor, a successor fund. Uh, that's a next generation fund after the, this one, when this one is uh, close to fully deployed. And it depends definitely on how the pipeline materializes and, and how quickly we, we finalize the deal that we are currently working on. But uh, we uh, will make sure we do not stay without the capital. So as soon as uh, the visibility of uh, deploying majority of the fund comes, we will go out into the market with our successor fund, which is going to be much larger than this one. Mm -hmm. And uh, the investors, st still the, the usual suspects, uh, like, like the uh, uh, European... Uh, European investment uh, funds. Mm -hmm. and, so, and so on, or, or, or uh, more and more of a pri pri uh, private and, and uh, I don't know, fund of funds and, and the players, which are, uh, I think, uh, more typical in, in the rest of the Europe. Uh, private equity landscape. It's an interesting theme that you touched upon uh, and this theme has been already for a number of years around because private equity is uh, kind of a closed club uh, available you know for those institutionals, large ones, the professional investors and uh, mostly was closed to those qualified investors which is as well a bit of a question why because the qualified investor, for those who doesn't know, it's a, a person who can deploy, uh, commit 125,000 uh, euros at least, which means a person already understands the risks and uh, you have to have enough liquidity and savings to be able to lock this amount for five, six, sometimes eight years. Uh, and definitely the, it was close for the retail investors. But uh, when we were raising our first fund, we already opened this asset class to the qualified investors. And um, actually the interest was huge. There was over 150 investors that, uh, that committed over 60 million euros. Um, and the rest is of course institutionals and, and, and corporates. And we uh, stepped ahead now and we have established INVL alternative asset fund. I'm not sure if I'm saying the whole name correct, but the idea is, is about the alternative asset, uh, assets fund. And this fund is open for retail investors. You can invest starting 5,000 euros. Yes, you lock your capital for, 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 for a few years, but, uh, but it's already open for retail investors because this fund will be investing. It's like fund of funds that's going to be investing only in another private, uh, private equity or alternative uh, assets uh, funds. Well, it's, it's going to be quoted as well, or what, what, what no? No, it's not going to be quoted. So far, it is, uh, it is privately, privately raised. But talking about the quoted, so yes, uh, the giants, like global giants, for uh, like how retail investors can get exposure to the private equity. So globally, such giants as Blackstone, they are quoted. So you I, I have think... shares and that's it. In Valde itself is quoted. You can buy shares. Yeah, I think East Cup already had a, a few years back as well, some week of, uh, which they quoted in Stockholm, I guess, uh, doing the private uh, equity investments, if I'm not mistaken. But, but anyway, okay, so, um, so percentage-wise, then uh, the, the, uh, uh, the qualified investors or the grown-ups who, have, who, who get, got hold of 125,000 and should be able to, to take care of themselves uh, and the investments, uh, how big is that part, uh, I mean, percentage-wise? So the institutions and, and the, and the uh, qualified investors, which are not institutions, uh, roughly, I mean, just the indication. So 40%? Oh, that's, I think... 35, 40 per, I'm, I can't tell. very I'm, impressive. I'm very bad at calculating by heart. So 60 million roughly is from, from the... 60, 165. From 165. Okay, yeah, so, okay, yeah, it's, it's like... No, it's like, one-third. Yeah, I guess... Four, four, <laughs> More one-third. I guess even yes, 40, 30, yeah, probably. Yeah, 35, 40. Yeah. Um, okay. Which is a lot. 
Yeah, I think that's that's and I, what what it reflects actually is that how many uh, entrepreneurs have made money and and uh, have some money on the side. Of course, at the low interest rate environment, um, you're look, looking for yield, and and uh, if you have the money as well, you you're ready to put um, some money aside for longer time to to, to have this higher yield and, and maybe see additional opportunities. And because all this investment is a long term. And that's a long-term investment that can uh, provide you financial security for the future. Of course, you have to understand there will be bumps along the, along the road. You're not going to have some straight arrow only up. There are disturbances in the markets, uh, the valuations of the companies going up and down. Let's say hit COVID hit, it's like 30% of the value of the portfolio companies, but they recovered. So it's the same as with the listed markets. Like you shouldn't be uh, uh, scared and just quickly liquidate your positions. The good point here is you cannot liquidate. So you just have to sit tight and uh, wait until uh, the manager who's professional and knows when to exit and, and what to do will professionally manage your money and just uh, give you your return. Yeah, I think there's a disclaimer here that, that uh, uh, continuous growth and improvement is only in the salesman's pitches, but, but uh, reality requires some nerve. Reality and, requires, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and, and ability to, to, uh, to give, give time for the investments to ripen, so to say. But, okay, but the time frame is, uh, for you as well is 10 plus 1 plus 1, I guess. Yes, 10 plus 1 plus 1. This exactly. is the standard model. Yes, it's, it's standard. It's absolutely standard. Okay, very good. So maybe there is something else we have missed to ask and, and would you like to uh, kind of like pinpoint and, and, and uh, clearly make, make sure for our listeners, um, for the, for the uh, in, uh, involved investments, in private equity investments you plan here? I, uh, I think we discussed a lot, <laughs> really a lot about the market and, and about the companies. I would just urge, Maybe this Invalda INVL brand somehow is not too much known in the Latvian markets. I think we're much more known in, 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 Lat in Lithuania than, than in Latvia. So just know that we exist. Uh, talk to people uh, from the portfolio companies that we have uh, about how we work, who we are, and, and, and how the cooperation with us is, is ongoing. Because I am more than sure you will get only, only the best uh, comments. And if you really need uh, capital for growth or, uh, or you want uh, to exit or diversify somehow your portfolio or you're a management team, so just uh, pick up the phone or, or just drop us an email. And I don't know, we can talk a bit if, uh, if it's uh, interesting on how we help uh, the founders. Yeah, I think that, that that's, that's a very important point. Like yeah. Why to go to the, to the private equity? And, um, so there are a few points I would, uh, I would say that one thing is the, as I mentioned, wealth uh, diversification. For a number of those founders and entrepreneurs, their portfolio, com their company, it's not a portfolio, their, their company, their business that they have is like 90% of their wealth. Well, their wealth is concentrated and in it's the concentrated and it's concentrated uh, and it's really scary how they concentrated wealth because anything goes wrong. Your, your whole life is, is gone. So first, it gives diversification for you. You don't need to, to exit 100%, and that's what we usually tend, uh, tend uh, to have, is uh, founders staying with us together. And the percentages, of course, vary on the agreement, but, uh, but we tend them, we want them to stay together. We bring the talent development, so because uh, with all the huge and, and big deal of respect that we have for founders and entrepreneurs, who develop their companies from scratch, from nothing. But uh, once the company is growing, uh, you can really fail or not fail maybe, but uh, stagnate if you do not invest in and do not hire a management who is capable of running the large corporations, the growing ones, because it, it, it brings in a you know, completely different set of complexities and uh, challenges that, uh, that the growth is bringing in. The business building itself uh, and the financial sophistication that can be brought to your company by the private equity, because uh, as I mentioned, uh, we know where to look at and uh, how to direct. And we uh, really urge and um, allow companies, they teach them to embrace the best practice in systems, in processes. 
we uh, really urge them to make bold decisions in terms of the growth and expansions. And sometimes you just need that little push that the new owner can, can, can bring in. And uh, because the financial sophistication, so what we usually see is the underdeveloped uh, financial departments and uh, bringing in the best practices of reporting, allowing more strategic and very granular reporting, again, allows you to find the new value creation, the new value drivers, which you couldn't see when you didn't have a very granulated uh, information. Uh, but as, as well, the, the different point of view. Uh, on, and the different the, point of view. Yeah, a fresh look. Fresh, at that, fresh and, look, and, and which, yes. which could probably bring, bring uh, out in some, some uh, further in, in efficiencies or uh, uh, possibilities to develop. Yes, process. or possibilities yeah. to develop, because before the investing, that's what we, uh, what, what we do, is we look into the company and we try first to establish what are the key value drivers and then to focus on, on those that actually move the needle, because you can just uh, go mad if you will try to do all the possible projects. You need to actually focus. So that's as well the focus that you bring in into, into the new company. Of course, you're the capital for the organic growth. And last but, but not the least, and maybe one of the most important things for those founders and ent entrepreneurs is that you get two bites of the same apple. So the first bite is when we are coming in and we are coming in with a new capital and of course you uh, liquidate part of, your, uh, part of your shares, you sell them to us. And uh, since we are asking founders usually to stay with like 10, 30%, I mean percentages vary, it's, it's just not the controlling stake because we are coming in with the controlling stakes. And, um, but of course not necessarily. And then the second apple, once we grow the company together and we increase the value, the founder gets the second bite of still the same apple, which sometimes it's even larger than the first one. Yeah, so, so you already taken out some, some of the money and, and then you can do it with and, uh, whatever you, whatever you, you, you always, want. always wanted. <laughs> yes. And at the same time, the other part keeps growing most, most likely as, as you help to, to pick the low hanging fruit and, uh, from the... Finance, uh, financial uh, efficiencies and as well the uh, management information system and, and maybe uh, some additional angles to develop the, the business. So, of course, uh, the business like yours, uh, they always want to be the only buyer and the only negotiation partner for the, for the company uh, owner who is selling this company or so on. But, 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 uh, but as we know from the comp company's perspective, the competition always is good. But certainly, uh, you are uh, the player which has been maybe less present in the, in the market, which means that uh, for the entrepreneurs and, and company owners and businesses in La Latvia, there is a new player, big, uh, serious, significant and experienced play player, which is um, uh, maybe more diligent and less arrogant than the existing players and, and who, uh, with an investment experience uh, which, which uh, can help uh, for the investors. So, and let's uh, let's uh, uh, hope that the God will help us, and, and uh, we'll be able to continue developing the business, not not uh, doing the fighting. So, so um, uh, anything else? Uh, I think we had an extremely valuable and a very inf informative uh, uh, discussion and, 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 and talk. Uh, uh, as you professionally all did laid out, is there nothing else? Well, we we can uh, tell goodbye to our um, uh, viewers and, and, and listeners and. And I think it, it, there is a lot of information in this, and it's ex extremely helpful. So, the amount uh, and and, and um, uh, the involved in the in the private equity fund, uh, uh, opportunistic for all the investments in industries they can invest, and uh, to ready to add value and, and capital for your company. Definitely. Most importantly, we are ready to create the real value in your companies together with you. Thank you. Thank you.